not just artifacts in that sense, but echo facts too. So we can try to study what the people eat in the past. Or do they like you know the hum? Or, you know, whether do they use it? <laughs> Who knows? But again, we, this is part of archaeology. So it's not just about things being old and looks very pretty, but also about the life. Apparently, uh, we haven't really found anything related to it, but apparently in the 1930s, the British archaeologist stationed at the then Raffles Museum, they were doing a lot of work in Malaya, going up to Kedah, Perak, Sarawak, to do a lot of work. For some reason, they never dug in Singapore. But they actually found some um, stone tools, and stone tools dating to 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, around the coast of Singapore. So it does suggest that there may be a settlement about 2,000, 3,000 years during the Great Migration, right? People moving, populating uh, Southeast Asia. So there might be small little groups of people, maybe not a city size or, or town or even village size, but different migrant groups of people making camp along the coast. Well, first today with recognition, we can't find anything. Or maybe it's still there, because now some 30 meters of sand or so on. So one day we'll dig it up. But I'm not a prehistorian in that place. I don't work in that way. I'm a historical archaeologist. Specifically, I deal a lot with during European contacts, so it's a bit much later. Right, so in a nutshell, this is our store, and this is some of the things, samples that which I keep, because we want, again, like, like I said, we can study not just the artifacts itself, but how, how can we reconstruct the physical landscape in the past. Now, these stands are quite unique, because you can see they're all different colours, different strata. Uh, this stand is what we believe to be from the Tamasic period, where all the artifacts are being found. So, if you can get someone to analyse them, what sort of content we have in there that might be cross fade or something like that. So, it would be great for us to figure out. So, in the future, when we find across similar type of chemical composition in this, uh, the sediments, that we can tell, ah, at least we can say with certain degree of certainty that this relates to a certain period, right? So, that's coming up. Uh, it says you make always throw away that bottles, you know, soy sauce, alcohol, or whatever, what have you. There's lots of very nice celadon coming up again, in the green celadon, it's not the top-notch quality. Uh, one of the interesting finds we had last year, in December, was we stumbled across a Second World War oh, uh, trench. Mm. And we have things like British helmets. Mm. Uh, this is right in the Padang, so I did a transact into the Padang to see what the boundaries are like. Although today you can say the boundaries are very clear, SLA boundaries, this is the city hall, this is the Supreme Court, the Padang. But in the past, of course, we were trying to figure out how was the boundaries like. Was well, this part of someone's bedroom that extends into the Padang or into the shop? So we stumbled onto a World War II uh, a depository of uh, military helmets and gas masks. Let me show you the picture for it and you can have a better understanding of what not just a helmet is. It's half a meter and you find lots and lots of material, uh, helmets, gas masks, uh, bits and pieces of webbing, uh, parts of the uh, their uniform and lots of uh, alcohol bottles, I guess. <laughs> For some reason, this British guy is actually think. Uh, the main thing about artifacts in the military is that we can actually really put a date on it. It's just like a camera. When you look at a camera, there's a model 5000 Mark 5, Mark 2, or whatever. So there's a sort of almost like, I won't say serial number, but at least uh, you can put a date of when it was manufactured. And all these materials, we know that they are manufactured before 1941 or 1942. And this puts it right flat in the day we are able to determine that this little pit was dug up, dug up in what, February 1942. And what happens in February 1942? The surrender, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So when they surrendered, they dump everything. And adding to the context and a little bit of flavour, obviously, I don't think the British were very happy people. They drank up as much as they can <laughs> and dumped in all the bottles along with it. How did you say what? It's 50 centimetres from the ground. It's still out there. There's still lots of it. So there's lots of things to the Padang. Oh. There should be a Japanese anti aircraft cannon somewhere. And also, a bomb. You never know. <laughs> yep, the bombs, yes, they find it all the time. So you can see it's not that deep. Right here. So, hands are not very much intact. Over here, if you follow me on the stratigraphy, uh, it's quite straightforward. You probably can figure out what's going on. It's, it's not rocket science or anything. You can see that there were at least three different intrusions. It's quite obvious because there's a pipe going down, and this is probably a whole sewage chest pit, a manhole. Uh, which is great for archaeology because a lot of things fall into the plumbing, right? So there's all sorts of things that come up, coins, gold, rings, and things. 
this once in the US when I was excavating, we found someone's glass eye in Belgium. Oh, so there's all sorts of things, there's someone's eye looking at you. <laughs> so you can see that this is an intrusion over here. Here's another intrusion as well, because there's another cast iron pipe. So obviously this is a much later date. Uh, judging from the bricks, we think it's post-war. Probably post-war, uh, I suspect Without looking at the floor, but I suspect it could be you know, Jurong or Alexander Big Book, so it's quite recent kind of thing, it's not so new. Um, but here, what we have is what we think is the Damascus period. So this very nice dark sand, this is what we suspect is the, the so-called sand of Sanglina Otama, right, when they came here and they built the city. So this is just the age of Damascus period. Very, very nice, very fine sand. You guys can feel it for yourself. Touch the sand of our ancestors. <laughs> yeah, you can kiss the sand. And you start selling it. <laughs> oh, there's even an artifact there. There's even one piece of artifact. So you can hand it yes. around. Everyone can have some. It's almost white type of pure yes. sand. Look at the green, look at the color, right? It's, it's almost white. Ooh, so this wow. is really the original sand of the tropical yes. island. The beach is just round in the, the middle, yeah. at the Padang, so and then when the British the arrived, they reclaimed the area. So you can see very, very beautiful type of sand. Mm -hmm. Now let's take a pause for a moment. I don't know whether you remember the story of Sanglina or Tama. <laughs> of all the places in the, this region, why did he choose to land, or she chose, wherever this person is, <laughs> chose to land on this island? I mean, they can be Santosa or St. John's, or Latukong. Why this place? According to the Sajara Malayu, he's this one line that says he was hunting on uh, Bata. And he looked across the horizon, he saw this island, beautiful white sand. And possibly this may be the sand that he's, uh, that he's talking about. So there in a nutshell, you can see it. Uh, Archaeology is about layers, it's about different peeling back different things and interpreting it. So that's how it is. So the red one above the black, the dark Yeah, red. this these are all the clay and things put in to construct the road. That's 19th so century, 20th century. 20th century, it's much, much later even. And the 19th century layer, at least within this unit, seems to have been eradicated. It's gone. Uh, when we did a few evaluation, uh, where uh, under the mound right now, the car parks, we found great works and things, a little great uh, feature. We suspect that we have been from the hotel, Hotel de la Europe, and it's been here. At least, I, that's what I think. I don't know, we can't verify that. So, but in the center over here, as you can see, there's a lot of disturbance over time. And you see a disturbance all the time, right? Someone digging out a road, putting in new SCV cables, fiber optics. They dig and mix, dig and tuck. So, that's bad for archaeology in a sense. Here's an artifact, I think you can. Oh, you can. From there? From yeah, there, it's, quite, yeah, from there. it's quite nice. Yeah. Development is destructive to the archaeological record. Archaeology itself is destructive. As we dig, we are destroying the record. So it's very, very important that we make very good notes. And as you can see from the things I have here, we do our best. Of course, you can say in today's day and age, we have cameras and digital photography. We try to document as much as we can. But nothing is better than the actual, uh, what is that? Old-fashioned documentation. So if I may come by, uh, Kevin. So we make the details, different colorations of soils and stuff. Then ultimately, and we have of course the unit records where we actually write about the various units and we draw little figures and try to describe what we find in each different layer. I mean that's very important because you know we want to get the three-dimensional. It's not just a flat two pane, two D with X and Y, but X, Y, and Z type of dimension where we find things. And finally, we of course we write reports which nobody reads except ourselves. <laughs> and pat ourselves on the back. But I guess so. I mean, if I read, a if you allow me to read a passage to you, it just says things like, "The proposed site for the newly created National Art Gallery rests within the historically and archaeologically important civic district development plans." For blah blah blah. It's very boring. And oh, okay, let me read something for the inside to you. It says, uh, "As part of the ex exploration of boundaries to the site, the east-west transect aligning excavation unit extends across the road." Good God, what are they talking about, right? So hopefully someday we'll do a more popular press, but. Anyway, the technical reports there, so all the illustrations about the different uh, profiles, the different strata, the different things that we find are, well, we write things like that which will never make it on the top 10 best of the list. But what I'm trying to um, uh, to tell you is that it is a destructive process and hence we make our, all this is like my site diary which I make, make notes about and the unit diaries and unit sheets and stuff. So there are processes which takes time, right, as with uh, most science. 
So later when you excavate, uh, there will be a crew lead, a crew chief in, with you in the, in the unit and he or she will advise you. They have been with me for a long time, a lot of them have been long time volunteers. Uh, they have been working with us for I think, like, at least half a decade, so, so they are quite well versed in what we are doing. So maybe I just ask you to take their instruction and take the lead. Because you have to be very careful as we excavate so we don't just dig holes in the ground. Because if you know better, I can just hire any uh, any foreign uh, migrant labor, right? <laughs> now this is part of some of our more interesting finds which I brought up to share with you guys. Uh, this was found here as well, a little bit. Dr. Yeo Kang Shua's wife found this one, a little bit of gold. Uh, you can see, you can hold it around. I know you're pointing, it looks like the foil or wrapper for the Ferrero Rocher, maybe. <laughs> yeah, but it's a little bit of gold. We think it's probably Javanese. Uh, they, uh, in gold leaf, there might be some inscription on it. We haven't opened it up. Uh, but there's a tradition in, in, in the Majapahit uh, period that the the, the, the priestess class, they go out and sell these little gold talisman the sheets and you there's a sutra or a little type of mantra on it and then you crumble it and throw it into the wind or bury it or something. So that might be one of those. Uh, something interesting, local. I'll ask you to be careful and don't try not to bend them because there are quite a few things that are corroded here. Uh, a few things are inside. There's glass, edged glass, uh, very very rare from the time period. Uh, this is something very nice, intricate as well, so do be careful with it. Uh, this one is not from this site, but at Victoria Concert Hall, which we dug around the corner. You can see a very nice Pisces, so a pair of fish, then on it. So, have a look. Uh, this is, of course, it looks like corroded metal, but lots of fishing hooks. So, I guess maybe it gives rise to the fact that, yes, it's a coastal region, people do fish. 